So go ahead and log in using your 570, like a username and password. And what should happen on everyone's desktop, there should be an R drive. Okay, so that's what we want to be looking at, because the R drive is really where we're going to be. It's that shared uh, server volume that we can all access. Yeah, you, each one of you need to work on computer. Exactly, that way it gets up. Same here, so you two got a computer, you you're want not, to get on a computer You're not too? looking at one screen. You, each one of you need to have a computer working. This one's just out of commission. No, exactly, because this is actually the real experience with sharing is like, although you're going to be side by side, we're going to really simulate the experience as though you were sitting in several rooms on opposite sides of the building and stuff like that. And still see how you can kind of coordinate your work. So go ahead and we'll start with just getting everyone booted up and ultimately Try and see if you can get into that R drive. Let's see if we can get into there. Okay, then are you logged in as CT570? Let's go ahead and see how you're logged in. Tell it in the start menu. Let's try that. Oh, is, is it Steam? And, and, and what does Joe say on the side? Interesting. So it's just not connected right now? Okay, it could have like uh, got lost somehow. I'll tell you how we can fix that again. Actually, I'll fix it for you. What we're going to do is we're going to map the network drive back in. Can this is really a Windows file sharing at its own network. <coughs> but what we're going to do on our drive, we're going to say there's something called rev server. And then rev share. And then, oh, wait, it's Reddit user. That's how I set that up. And it's CE 57 exactly. There you go. So now you're good. So we're looking in the R drive. Let's get everyone in the R drive. Um, actually, oh, if it, yeah, it hasn't logged in already, yeah, log into it. So I can get to it. It's not the one. And then what is it? Is it CE 57? Yeah, CE capital. There we go. So, hang tight for just a second. How are you guys doing on this side? You're all there? Look at that hard drive? No return. Yeah. Okay, no worries. Beautiful. Okay, let's get everyone up and running. You're looking good, you're looking good. You're rebooting. Those two are both rebooting. Okay. As those are all rebooting, let's just go ahead and talk a little about sort of really what we're up to and how this is all going to work. Here's basically the deal. Okay. As we're working in Revit, okay, everything and when we're working in linked models or in single models is stored in a single file. So all those different objects, all those different elements, and there's really you know, thousands and thousands of elements in that single file. That's why the files get to be very, very large. Okay? But it's still stored in a single file. Okay? And when we want to start doing work sharing and actually share things amongst us, we can't actually be both working with the same individual file because if I have it out, then you can't write changes. If you have it out, I can't write changes to it. We can't keep it all as a single file. So what we have to do is actually let the product break your model into a lot of little files. Okay, just every element is essentially in some little file so that we can work with it independently of each other. And as opposed to storing it on your one local machine, what we do is we put it out on some shared Windows volume so that we can all get to it from the other sides. And then as you're working away, although you're looking at the entire model, the collection of all those files, anytime you make a change, you're really just changing one little piece of the model. Okay? So really the file server is acting like a big database. Okay, it's not truly a database. What you did in ARCHICAD with a BIM server, that's tr more truly a database in the classic sense. This is kind of like the cheap database that's kind of part way there but doesn't quite work right. But almost there. Okay. It's almost there, and hopefully we'll move to a more of a database model as we go. Any plans? I, I, I cannot tip my hat. Okay. <laughs> but you might imagine that's a good direction to be heading in, which usually means it's on the platform somewhere. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to be doing? We need to get you in that shared folder because that folder full of files is going to be your database, and then as you work, you're going to be making changes to that shared folder. Okay, but you don't really have to worry about it. Once we set this up, and this is where it gets hard, we set it up and it's like, oh my God, we went through so many steps, will this never end? But as soon as you get it set up, after that it works very seamlessly. Okay, but it's all in getting it set up right. Okay, so you got a drive, you got a drive, you got R over there, Does everyone got the R drive up? Excellent, okay. If you've got the R drive up, let's start by doing this. 
Okay, so are all three of you in a group? Just basically figure out who your, your teammates are in your groups together. I'm going to sort of end up joining one of your groups in a little while. But open up the work sharing team folders folder. Slide you coming back. What's that? Back up? No, that's not working. This one's not working yet. Okay, let's, no worries. Let's just kind of get it all going for things. So what's going on here? So are you guys, you're in that team sharing folder? Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Can they be far apart from each other and oh, yeah. still work together? Well, it's, it's better if you can see each other. You can sort of yell at each other. It's okay. Yeah. It'll sort of work. Okay, so here's what we want to do. Inside that team sharing folder, what we're going to do is set up a subfolder for each of your different teams. So go ahead and decide on a team name for the two or three of you. And, oh, I'm going to create a new folder because I'm going to be part of a team Birchin right now. You are CIN. I have such a hard time with your name because there's, there's vowels in unexpected places. Really? Like, I don't know. It's, it's always misspelled in a certain way. That explains. Is that it? Yeah. I'm, I'm B I always get it with B-O. Oh, really? Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> I, 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 I like things that are systematically wrong because it's... Uh, hard to remember also. Exactly. Well, have you ever had the experience where you know you remember something wrong, but you can't remember... You, what you did, what, what, exactly. Yeah. There's certain words that are that way for me. Gauge. I know. I, mine is a difficult one. Okay, so go ahead, create some different folders for yourself and give them some different names. Don't worry, we're all creating these new folders. So actually, every team just needs a folder. So even though there's two or three of you on a team, you just need one team folder between the two of you. So some will be team A, some will be team B, some will be team C. Just kind of create a little team name for yourself. One folder per team. Okay, so I have team one, I have team Birchin. And I have some more new folders, so go ahead and change those names. Just one of you have to change, doesn't matter who. Just one of the people on your team, just so we have a place to store our files. Yeah, yeah don't worry about it. This is, this is the easy stuff, because you, you get to like, lose this identity in a few hours. Okay, because this folder that you're creating, that's going to be the place where you want to store your team's folders. And once you put your team's folders in, or your team's files in there, you don't want to move them from that. You want to keep them in the same place. Because in order to really keep this thing working, you, you, you always need to be pointing back to that same place. If you move things around, it's a little bit confused. And we have to kind of get it straightened back out again. Okay, so how are we doing in terms of getting stuff? We got most of those? Roy Sai. Shui Zhang. Cheng Shuai. Okay. So we have you? more folders than we need. So. That's okay. Just decide, remember which one you need. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to go into Autobus Revit, very much in the way we standardly do, but we're going to sort of do something very special to our file. We're going to tell it that, hey, you're no longer a solo file. You're actually going to be a central file, the database file that everything is going to start posting against. Okay. So now for doing this, this is kind of the hard part. You know, of your team, look around with the two of you. You know, one person's going to do this because only one person needs to do it on you know for your team. Everyone else kind of sit on your hand, okay? Because it's you know, don't worry, you'll have something to do in just a minute. But for these next three or four minutes, only one of you needs to do something. Okay, so decide which one of you is going to make that central file. It doesn't really matter which one it is, just one of you has to decide. So look across the aisle, kind of decide who it is that's going to be doing this next step. The other person just watch along and follow. Okay, so you got that decided? Okay, then very good. If you have that decided, let's do this. Go out to, if you kind of pull out to a level, I just actually backed up a level. Go to, there's a folder called Session 5A Work Sharing. And inside there, you'll find something called mixed use, ar mixed use architectural. That's the same little building we were looking at last time. And what I want you to do is just open that up. Now, to open that up, actually, let's do it the right way, as opposed to just double-clicking on it, which would then open possibly Revit architecture, possibly Revit structure, or MEP, because they're three products which are actually the same product under the covers, but really should be one product. Okay. Go through, and, and rather than trying to just double-click on it, because it will be the confusion, let's just open Revit Architecture, and we'll open it from within Revit Architecture. So I'll go to the Start menu, say Autodesk. 
Revit Architecture, and I'll open Revit Architecture 2012. And actually, we can do this from within architecture or structure or MEP. It doesn't really matter which one we're doing it from within. Okay, because it's really, the, the mechanics are all the same. It just is, again, different tools available for you based upon what sort of things you're doing. So let's see if we can get Revit Architecture open. And for the one of you who opens up that file, okay, go out to the, uh, that uh, R drive for you, and let's see if we can get that opened. Now we're going to just save it in a very special way. Yeah, I'm gonna let's, let's let that catch up so we can do it together. I think my machine's a little slower than yours. So slow, but it'll work. So here's basically the overview of what we're gonna do. One of you is gonna take that, each team is gonna take that file and is gonna turn on work sharing and save the file with a special name and call it the central file. Okay. As soon as we have a central file, super. Then all of us can open the central files for our teams and share the items in that central file. But we have to kind of do it in the right order, just in terms of setting it up. So again, here I am just opening up Revit Architecture. Let's let it do that. So slow on this machine. Thank you, sir. Okay, and from within Revit Architecture, open up. It's the thing that's on the R drive. For me, it's on the Z drive, so it'll look a little bit different for me. And actually, you can just open it, and then we'll save it as. So I'm going to open up uh, Work Sharing in Mixed Use Architectural. It'll probably warn me that some of you already have it open. That's OK. OK. The root has expired? Yeah. It shouldn't be doing that, but it's into your mode. Hmm. Can we try working on a different machine? Okay. Yeah, let's see if we can sort of work around that. There's just if, let me think about this in terms of being in viewer mode. Actually, if you can go to under the the R menu, the one that's up in the corner, go to R of Navline Code, pull down the licensing. Let's try the one from the I'm not sure why that is. Did you restart this machine when we came in today? Did you start at C570? Yeah, it uh, it's done the best uh, oh, yeah. I set up on this one. One course is on 570. One course is on 570. Okay, because I, I think that perhaps if we were starting from this, uh, the same look, uh, you know, this, this, this license there, I think they may be caused by the way we're going to set up right now. The um, thing is, if we uh, open the other so it's already the software. The other one. All right. So he done. I'm not sure because what's sort of interesting is theoretically, because of the way the system works, it should be the same in all the machines. Yeah, because this is an image uh, of the computer. No worries. Work but unless you're logged into a different image. So, when I see that, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, that's because we've all, oh, well, it can come back from here. And I'm not sure what it is. It's, I'm not sure why it's letting him open it. It doesn't really matter. In either case, we're all going to do a save as in just a minute and make our own copy of it. But it's, uh, it's, it's okay. I think it's really whoever opens it first tends to get it, and then everyone else gets the dialogue afterwards. It just means since we're all trying to open the same file. Well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know right offhand why that is. But, well, as soon as we're going to say that, we'll be good. Don't worry. Oh, no worries. So you're good back there? Excellent. Okay. And we're good back here. We're almost good. We just have a little licensing issue over there. Oh, uh, she solved it. Oh, she solved it? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Solved. That is good. Got like, it. Just go save over there or save work sharing? Say again? You just show save. Oh, you, for now, don't do anything yet. Just save. Well, that 
Just Oh, you can if you want to. Okay, let's do that. That'll make people happier. Okay, how about this? In your teams, one member of your team, why don't you, since you have this open, we're all doing the same thing, why don't we do a save as, and what you want to do is save as this project, but instead of leaving it out in the session 5A work sharing, let's go ahead and put it in the folder under uh, work sharing team folders. Put it in your teams folder. And you can just save it there. That way, we'll all have a unique copy of it. And again, only one member of your team needs to do this. The other ones don't need to just yet. Okay, so just go ahead and save it in the local folder. Looking good. How are we doing back over here? You had it saved as? Excellent. Okay, here, now we're finally getting to some of the good stuff. This is all this, we're just fighting with Windows and networking and stuff like that so far. When it comes time to actually go through and set up work sharing and do the collaboration, all the features we need to live under this tab called the Collaborate tab. So if you go through and on the, across the top look for Collaborate and choose that tab, you'll find there's this whole issue that says work sets and it's kind of grayed out right now. There's some things about synchronizing and those are grayed out right now. And the reason it's all grayed out right now is we don't have work sets turned on for this file. And if we want to turn it on, it's actually very easy to do. Again, only one of you do this in each of your different teams. Click on the little work sets dialog, or little work sets tool. And stop and pause for just a second, and let's read what it's telling you here. It says you're about to enable work sharing. It wants to do some things about copying things between different work sets. Okay? And it's basically warning you a little bit, because here's the deal. When you do this to a file, it's like you know, you're going down a path and you can't go back. If you make a solo file, a shared file, there's no easy way to make it solo again. And making it a shared file introduces a certain amount of overhead to the whole thing in terms of working with it. So it just wants to warn you about that. The other thing it's sort of telling us here is that it's going to move everything that's already in that folder or in that model into one of two different work sets. It's going to take those levels and grids, those things that I like so much for coordination, and give them their own special work set called shared levels and grids that everyone can get to. It's going to take everything else in the model and move it into something called work set one. And let's pause for a second and talk about work sets and what they are. Okay. Work sets are really this idea that we could take all of these different elements in the model and assign them to different groups so that we could check out different parts of the model exclusively for ourselves and have them all to ourselves and no one else can touch them while we have them checked out. Okay, so it's kind of like going to the library. You go to the library, you pull out the book you want, you take it away, no one else can get to it until you check it back in. Okay. That's the way this is typically set up, and it's usually the way we set it up in industry, because in industry we sort of tend to care about who owns what and who can change what, and you like a lot of accountability and control over who can change different aspects of the model. So we tend to actually go through and set up very elaborate structures of work sets and put elements in different work sets and people check them out. And when you have them out, no one else can touch them and it's a very controlled environment. Okay. We're gonna, for the class though, use a slightly different model because it's gonna turn out that model is actually a little bit cumbersome for the way we tend to work as student teams in that if you go ahead and check everything out, but then you forget to check it in, and the other person on your team needs it, and you're gone for the weekend, there's this whole situation of you lock things up, and it's kind of hard to work. So we're going to use a different model. As opposed to checking things out of the library, we're going to do that thing where you go to the magazine section. You grab the magazine off the counter, and you sit on the couch there. But as soon as you're done, you just throw it back on the counter, and it's available for anyone else again. So you don't really check out and leave. Everything is, I can borrow it for a few minutes, but as soon as I'm done with it, I'm gonna put it back in the pool, okay? And it's another very effective way of working. For teams, it's actually sort of a more effective way. It's to sort of leave everything just in the pool and just kind of borrow things, and every time you synchronize, it'll put things back into the pool, and it's very, very fluid that way. It's very, very loose, but it still has that same ability that it won't let you overwrite things or make changes on top of each other. Okay, so maybe that'll be clear when we actually start doing it, but the big thing is we're not going to use work sets in the classic sense. We're going to use kind of a lightweight version of it that really, after having worked with a lot of different student teams, I, I fully advocate doing it this way because it's really a lot simpler. Okay, so here's how it works. We got the thing that says it will turn on work sharing, and we'll say, okay, let's turn that on. It's going to do a little work. It's updating. It's updating. It's doing its thing down there. Okay. Almost there. Ka -chunk, ka -chunk. Ah, 
Okay. It brings up this dialogue that looks like this. This dialogue is saying, hey, these are the different sort of work sets that I have available right now. One called Shared Levels and Grids, one called Work Set 1. That's all looking fine. Currently, I have both of those checked out. I'm going to say OK to that right now. There's really nothing I need to do to this thing. But what I want to do now is, now that I've actually gone through and created the work sets, again, one of the members of your team needs to do this, only once. Try doing the save again. And when you do a save, it'll say, hey, this is the first time that this project's been saved. Hmm. It's going to become a central model. Therefore, do you want to save this as a central model? And the answer is yes, you do. Okay, just give me a little warning. Okay, we have a choice here. We can go through and just sort of save and using the same name, kind of make that the central model. I'll actually say no to this. Because what I tend to like to do is actually do a save as, because I tend to give my central files a special name. I'll save it as a project. And as opposed to just being mixed use architectural, I'm going to call this mixed use architectural, and I'm going to even put the word central on there in gigantic letters, so there's absolutely no doubt in my mind about which one's the central file. Okay, and this is sort of a convention I like to use, whatever it is. But you want to always sort of have people be able to identify which one is the central file because that's really the special one. Okay, so I'll save that away, just to distinguish it. Okay, so what are we going to do from now on out? From now on out, whenever we go on in. We're not going to open the single file. We're always going to open the central file. Okay? Let's show you how to do it in a special way. Because although we're going to open the central file, what you want to do is actually make a little local copy of things for you to work on that will synchronize with the central. And if you do it the right way, it will happen for you very automatically. OK, so let's try this. Each different team should have one file inside that shared team folder that says you know, team B central. Team version central, whatever it is. Just every team needs to have that thing. Okay? And if you have that and you're feeling good, let's go ahead and I'm going to do this thing where I'm in the central right now. There's choices over here where it says synchronize, synchronize with central, relinquish all mine, backup and restore, editing requests. Go ahead and choose that synchronize with central choice, just in case you happen to make any changes. What's going to happen is it'll tell us where the central file is located. It'll, if we have anything that we've changed, suggest that we want to relinquish them. I'm actually going to choose to relinquish everything just by clicking on that checkbox. Say OK. And the reason I'm doing that is I basically want to put everything back into the library. I don't want to have anything checked out right now because we're going to start fresh. OK. If you've got that part done, go ahead and close out this file and get back to that screen. And again, you only had to set that up once. So if that looks painful, hopefully you won't have to go back there too many times. Okay, given that you have that, when you're looking back at this screen, go ahead and everyone get back to the screen. So go ahead and close everything out. Just have Revit open so you're looking at the home screen. Close all the different... Is there a question? Yes. Um, that, what was that last step again? You said the, <coughs> where you went and you did the option and released everything back into the That was just, uh, when I synchronized, I just said relinquish everything. It's like, it's, I just check off to relinquish it all. The other way is just, even in the menu, it says relinquish all. You can do that too. Okay. Because we did, yeah, we did save as and we didn't get that, that uh, pop up that said that. Uh, when you did the save as, were you, were you saving it as a central? Did you get the warning that said you were saving it as a central? Yeah, we didn't get the warning. Ah, okay, then you probably didn't quite get it as a central. Go to Google Work Sets. Let's make sure we have it on. Who, who's creating your central? Okay, so let's go to Work Sets. That looks like you got it there. You're fine there. It looks like they're not in the right now. It's okay. I think you're actually in good shape. Just go ahead and close it out. I think you're going to be in good shape. Yep. Beauty. Okay, so now look over at your teammates and stuff like that. Let me show you how this part works. And I'll ultimately join one of your teams, too. But what's going to happen is you, from now on, should come to the home screen and say, open. Everybody right? Actually, I think I can do it here, too. 
what I want to do is go out and find where that central is. So I'm looking in my team virgin folder. I see the mixed use central right there. And notice in this open dialog, you should have some special choices here. Because this is a central file, there's this little choice right here that says create new local. And that's what you want to be looking at. Do you see that? Should say create new local. Actually, I should check this with you guys before we even open it. Let's try this because everyone's machines are set up a little bit different. Cancel that for a second. Let's try something else before we go in there. We have to make sure to make team share or work sharing work that everyone has a unique name. Okay. And on these machines, I suspect that maybe we don't have a unique name right now. But do this. Go into the R menu, the big application menu, and pull down to options. And let's take a look at what your name is. My name is Instructor up here. Let's kind of see what your name is. And the only thing we need is we need to have like a different name. You and your partners need to have different names because that's actually how it keeps it coordinated. So it doesn't really matter. It can be your first name. It can be your student ID, whatever it is. But go ahead and give yourself a unique name on each of the machines. So just make sure like you don't, you don't both want to be a student because that will confuse it. Okay, so give yourself a unique name just for the purpose of this session. And if you got yourself a unique name, that is fantastic. In fact, I'll even go ahead and change my name temporarily. Okay, I'll say OK. Now I'll go back and do that file open, and I'll open the mixed use arc central. It'll say, create a new local. And I will say, sure, that looks fantastic. Let's do that. So I'll click the open button. Let it do a little work. Okay, if you don't see that, that means you aren't actually selecting the central file. That the file you're selected we didn't actually have the central attribute turned on with it. So, yeah, let's go ahead and try that again. Why don't you go ahead and close that dialog? Yeah, just open the main one again. And it, it, uh, okay. who else is sort of not having that? Okay, so let's go ahead and so if the so the members of that team go ahead and close on out. So you're just looking at the home screen. Let's open the one that doesn't think it's essential. You can open that one, that's fine. Just open that up. Yeah. Let's just open it, we're gonna take a look. Oh, it looks like something has been copied or moved. Now that happens too. If if someone changes the path or changes the name or does something like that in the Windows file system. That could confuse it. So even though you created a central, it doesn't think it's essential anymore. I think that's what's happening. You go ahead and say close that. Okay. What you want to do is let's do a save as and save it as a project. And now we're going to choose the options and say make this a central after save. Okay, say OK with that. Okay, now save that. Yeah. What, what you're doing is you're basically telling it that it's essential. So what had happened to you was somehow after we created the central, either the file name changed or the folder name changed, something changed. Yes, I did add a central there Yeah, so you added that to the name. Yeah. No worries. So all we need to do then is really do a resave. So now when you close that up, And now when you do the open again, I think you'll get that choice. See, that says create new local? Yeah. So, so the issue is, for some people, it could be this that you renamed it or something like that. Okay, so we've got an open No, it's good. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. So what happens is when you go through and open it and you say create a new local, what happens is as follows. On your machine, it actually makes a little local copy of the central. Okay. And what it does is it actually appends your username to the back end of it. Okay, so it's a little hard to see because there's so much stuff going in at the top where the title bar is, but it actually has your unique name in there. That's how it kind of keeps track of who's who. Okay, so open and let's all sort of get a copy of these things. And actually, how about, let me do this. Rather than kind of working on my uh, Team Burchin one over here, let me kind of like tag into your team over here. So like, what's your team's name? Uh, Samuel Sparkish. Okay, great. Let me go ahead and I'm going to sort of jump right in there with you guys because it'll make a better demo to look at it that way.
Okay, so I'm not going to do not save the project. I'm going to relinquish everything. Whenever I get out, I should always relinquish. That's the whole idea. Put it back on the table and give everyone else access to it. So I'm going to say open. And instead of my team, Birch and Ong, I'm going to sneak right into another team right there. Right there. And I will get into your central. Ho, ho, ho. Actually, that's sort of a danger. That's one thing about this. You know, It's all just kind of controlled at the file level security thing. So uh, as student groups, we don't worry about this too much. In an office, you actually sort of worry about this because everyone, uh, you know, you want a little control on your data. You put a lot of hard work into here. OK. Yes? So are you saying, so basically, anybody that can get into your server can affect your model? It, anyone who has access to that file server volume or that file server folder. So when you do set this up in a commercial environment, it is important to kind of set up the right access privileges and permissions to make sure that only the people you should have access to it do have access to it. But that's controlled at the Microsoft at the folder level. It's more at the window level. Okay. Yeah. Because it's theoretically, if you have access to it, theoretically, you have access to it. Okay. So let's stop and take a look at how this all works. If I go on over now to the Collaborate tab and go to Work Sets, I should say that nothing's actually checked out to me. Although I'm here, there's nothing that says editable by my name because right now I haven't checked anything out. It's all still lying on the table. That's the way I kind of want it. But let me kind of show you what the impact of this stuff is. So for my team over here, let me go ahead and make a small change to this model and then we'll synchronize and you can sort of see what the effect is. Watch us first and then you can go do the same thing with your teammates. So here's the idea. Let's first say, for example, I got that little guy right here, that little parapet wall. You can see it has like this thing that looks kind of like a little honeycomb with a slash mark marked through it. That's because right now no one has it checked out. Okay. If I want to make a change, because in my architectural wisdom, I've decided that, you know, that parapet wall should really be much bigger. Ah, it looks like someone else is messing with it. Sanaz, <sighs> have you touched that element? Okay, it looks like you have, so I'm going to just say cancel that right now and make a different change, and then we'll go back to that. I'll change this one instead, but we'll get into that sort of little message in just a second. I'll change that one. Ha! You didn't change that one. So, what I've got is I've made a change to the element. Super. I'd like to put it out there so Sanaz can see it, and everyone can be happy. And here's how we do that. What we'll say is back over on the Collaborate tab. Actually, it's up here, too. There's a Synchronize... And if I say synchronize with central, and notice that borrowed elements is checked off now, it'll put the borrowed elements back in the pool. I'll say OK. OK. And voila, it's gone. Now, what will happen is, Sanaz and Kartim, why don't you go ahead and say, uh, what is it? It's basically you're going to request the latest. Reload. What is it called there? Reload latest. And what will happen is you'll get my change. Okay. Now, how about the other way? Why don't one of you make a change to an element? Okay, you make a change. And after you've made that change, go ahead and synchronize it with the central. Did you synchronize? And then what will happen is after you synchronize, So you got it synced back? Actually, you can just kind of click on that. The part that says it's synchronized, it was central. It's right just, just to the right of that. It has like a, there's active work sets. It's the next one over. There you go. Just click on that one. Um, that should work too. Either one. Okay. What it's doing, it's posting your changes. Ah, oh, looks like our team's been busy too. Okay, so I don't have those changes yet. Sanaz and Kartim have made some changes. When I say reload the latest, you'll see that on my model, I have a new parapet wall on the front, I have a gigantic one on the back. So what's happening is all three of us are making changes to the same model simultaneously. And what's happening is, is as long as after we make changes, we synchronize with Central, and then even when you synchronize with Central, what it does is it reloads the latest to kind of pull anything new in from anyone else. You sort of kind of get what's going on with that stuff. So it actually, that's kind of the gist of it right there. It's really this thing, as long as you go through and make changes and you remember to synchronize, and then when it synchronizes, it also pulls from someone else, you kind of do pretty good. So 
How about, we'll show you some variations on that in terms of problems we get with that in just a second. But why don't you try making some more changes? Like, just uh, just play around on your, with your teammate a little bit. For example, oh, I don't like that window. I'm going to delete it. And this window over here, I'm going to move it over to the center. Okay. And as soon as I'm happy with that, I'll say synchronize it. It'll post those changes. And then for you guys, why don't you go ahead and make some changes and then uh, post and change, relinquish uh, your things. Just kind of mess around a little bit with it a little bit just so you get a feel for it. You can add things, you can delete things, you can change the size of the things, it doesn't really matter. Any change you can make individually, you can make to the team project. Yeah. What do you have to relinquish when you're done making changes for the day? Well, and actually, it's better to re in this model we're using, it's better to relinquish a little bit as you keep going. I usually relinquish every time I sync, but yeah, it's because as long until you relinquish, you still have that element checked out. And we'll talk about that in just a second, because what happens is if you don't relinquish and you're still hanging on and someone else needs to make a change to that same element, it'll warn them, hey, you can't make a change because it's still checked out. The same one that you got to Exactly. Okay. That's what that's all about. So let's go ahead and just do a little playing, and then we'll let's set this up and really talk about what the morning message means and how to work around it. And that's the whole issue of what if someone hasn't relinquished yet or hasn't synchronized yet and need to make change. Yes? I'm just curious. So what if I don't synchronize with the just save it right in the model? What will happen is if you just save but you don't synchronize, it will save it on your local PC but it won't actually post it up to the central server so that someone else can look at it. So where that is useful is if you're making some changes and you're sort of halfway through, but you don't really feel like releasing it to your team yet, oh, okay. Okay, you can just do a local save. But as soon as you're ready to kind of like send it on out, okay, then you synchronize. So you just have to decide, you know, yeah, sometimes you're making changes and you're not quite ready to release. That's what that's all about. Okay? No worries. So, Mess it around, you got the idea what's going on? Okay, let's start talking about some of the variations and how you know you have to sort of worry about sort of who has what and like how to control that. For example, let me go ahead and synchronize just so I can get all the latest. I haven't made any changes, but it will reload all the latest to see what other things my teammates have been working on. Okay. Okay, so let's do this. So team, here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna go through and down on the second floor there I have those different windows. I'm going to take the one that's kind of the furthest one, the punched window on the left, and just slide it on over. Actually, now I should not do that. Let me undo it. How about doing this? How about one of you take, say, the window that's the furthest one over on the right and slide it around? Make some change to that window. Just one of you. It doesn't really matter which one. Just make some change to that window that's on the second floor, the one that's kind of far over to the right. Different size? Beautiful. That'll work just fine. Add, delete, change and modify. Okay, so we've made a change to that. I don't see the change because it hasn't been synced and relinquished yet. If I now go through and try to make a change, it'll tell me, whoa, I don't have permission to edit that element. What's going on is basically someone else has it out. They've made some change to it. Yeah, at this point, I really can't do anything to that element. What I really need to have happen is, before I can go through and make any changes, okay, why don't you go ahead and synchronize your changes? Okay, and now when I reload the latest, okay, you'll see the smaller window shows up. Now that I've synchronized, I can do the same, I can move it around. Ah, now it looks like, Cartiche, you've done something to something or other. Okay, so here's another sort of variation on it. What I've just tried to do is I've tried to move the element around, but I can't actually edit the element because Cartiche has it right now. He's the last one to touch it. So what it says is until he synchronizes, and I could just say, hey, Cartiche, why don't you synchronize? Or if Cartiche is not in my room, I could place a request. What will happen is it'll send a little request over the Internet. And eventually something will pop up on Cartiche's screen. However, it takes a while for this part to work, so it really is probably better just to holler at Cartiche. Can we see the What's that? Can we see the it should show up. Actually, what will happen in the dialogue is there's a place request just right down at the bottom of the dialogue. It just says place request. 
And then I'll, you see, I got a message now on mine. My editing request has been granted. You've been granted by, oh, by Pratish. So given the fact that it has been granted down in the corner, I am good. I can go through and close that on up. Oh, yeah, I, I placed all sorts of requests, haven't I? Okay, and now I can go through and make the change. It's telling me all sorts of stuff. Okay, but the idea is, whenever, as soon as we can, go through and do that synchronization. In fact, what you can see is down over here at the bottom, there's this little thing, it's down in the little uh, control bar where it says we can take a look at what the editing requests that are out there. We can sort of see what the, uh, oh, other users' pending requests are. Okay, we've had a request for a change, and there's the number of outstanding requests down there. But the big thing is, if you go through and just always go through and keep on syncing, and if you ever run into the thing where it says, hey, you can't change anything because someone else hasn't checked out, what you got to do is just sort of somehow communicate with the other person via text message, via email, over the phone, whatever it is. Let them know you need it. And as soon as they synchronize it, you'll be able to pull it back up. Okay, so in a really goofy way, that's the gist of work sharing right there. It really is just all about we spend an awful lot of time going through and setting it up just to get that central file right. But from here on out, we just sort of work with it and try to make changes and synchronize whenever we need to. How about this? Let's try this just to be on the certain side to kind of make sure let's work through the whole process again because you want to be able to repeat this. Go ahead and try closing up your version of the file. When I just try closing, it's going to say, you still have elements, low editable. What do you want to do? And you can keep the ownership, which is a bad thing to do. You don't want to keep ownership. You tend to want to relinquish because if you keep ownership, then your teammates can't get to things. So what I always like to do at the end of the session is just relinquish all. I'm going home for the night. I don't care. I'm not taking it with me. And close it on up. So I want you to try closing on up. And then when you are done, let's try opening again, and it will recreate the latest thing and we'll download it when you open it up again tomorrow. Yes. I'm going to do it when I went to close. It just says, do you want to save locally or not save? It didn't give me the relationship. That must mean that you don't really have anything borrowed. Okay. okay. And what I would do is... I would synchronize, so it's... If you've already synchronized before you closed, then it's already sort of checked them back in. You don't have anything outstanding. Okay. It's all telling you there. But in general, I always like to make a local copy because a local copy is really good just in case you know, the file server burns tonight to have a local copy somewhere that you could always recreate it. Important. What's that? Important. Oh, exactly. You always good to have a, a local backup yeah. and always relinquish. Really yes? So do I have to recreate the local file every time I start working? Like what will happen is if you go open through the menu there where it says create a local, okay, um, it will recreate it at that time. And actually, it's a better practice to do that. Let me tell you why. Because what happens is, if you have a local and you kind of keep it over here and you don't recreate it, you can get into the situation where your local is out of date with the central because you're working on it and you haven't synchronized. So you start making changes on your local that are out of touch with changes other people made. So when you do try to sync it, you get this kind of clash thing. Where then you're good. Yeah, that's what it is. If, if, even if you work on the same local all the time, that's fine to do. That's what I used to do all the time. Just make sure the first thing you always do is synchronize to pick up the links. Okay, so synchronize often, save often, and you'll sort of stay in good shape. Yes? So if I'm just working with my teammates, how can I create this shared folder that we want everyone to have? What we got to do is, it's all a Windows sharing thing, so we need to set up a computer in your lab or somewhere that you both have access to over the LAN, over the network. I see. Because even, you know, the way we usually do it, like even on my computer, if you, can just, you can take any folder and with Windows you can just share a folder. So it's all kind of a Windows sharing sort of thing. I see. So the difference between this and the Dropbox is because Dropbox automatically sync it for you when yes. you save it. 
But for this one, you always oh. save it in your own local file, but you know you need to synchronize it with the shared in the Exactly. Because if you do it this way with a shared folder, it's real time shared, where Dropbox is just a little bit async. Which generally is pretty good, but when you're doing a lot of database, it's not good. Because yeah, it's uh, control it. Exactly. Because yeah. sometimes it syncs right away, sometimes it takes five minutes to sync, depending on how big the file is. That's the essence of the issue. You're right on the essence of the issue. Why, you know, to really have hundred percent reliability, you need access to the live thing. Because can you imagine every time you go ahead and make a change, it's actually writing something back to the central file to say that, oh, Glenn's changed that. Oh, Merchant's changed that. Oh, Science changed that. Everyone's sort of like, uh, it's, it's keeping track of that in real time. So you don't want that to get even a few minutes out of sync because what happens then, it's that little window where you've changed something and someone else could change something and you wouldn't know that both of you have changed it. So. Yeah. Is that truly difficult for you to set up Windows sharing? Uh, no, no, because we didn't think of using Windows sharing. We're just using the, we thought that using Java is more fancy or hello. Yeah, no, now you know. Yeah. So, you know, for linked files, Dropbox A OK. Email them, Dropbox them, linked files, there's no danger. It's only when we do the sharing that you run into the danger of doing that. Does that make sense? OK. So, it's really pretty easy if you. Yeah, well, what's the kind of thing where we are right now? It's a. Uh, yes. I had a question for yes. Yes. Now, say, suppose. Uh, like the, like you want the plumber, you only want to have access to change the plumbing of the pipe. Is there are you better off setting that in a separate folder and just giving permission to that folder, or what's the best way to set that up so the plumber can only change his stuff? We tend to do that, and it tends to get to be by trades. Yeah, you know, what will tend to happen is all the architects will work with in sort of a single architectural file and share that file, whereas the structures and the MEP consultants work in a linked file. Okay, it's it tends to divide by discipline and by organizations, you know, more than anything, because if we're all in the same local lab and we're all in the same room, or you know, it's easy to do the sharing, but as soon as you start crossing over between different companies, you know, it's, it's sometimes nice. You know, it's, it's more of a coordination and logistics thing than it's not a technical thing. Because we could set it, we could set up a work set and they can share our file. But it's usually we like the degree of control so we can say that, you know, if your work was in this file, if anyone gets sued, that's your work. You know, as soon as we start sharing files, it gets a little bit mucky because, you know, and this is really where the, one of the hardest parts in this whole IDP kind of work sharing thing goes is really, you know, you, you would love to have a little audit trail for every element to say, who changed that thing? Right. Okay. And there's not that level of control in it now in where this is going more with BIM servers. We'll start to have like element by element histories. Yeah, and I, wow. when we use Archicad BIM server, it was exactly like that. We had an all the trail of all the types to us. Yeah, because you sort of want to know. Hey, I moved it over there. Why is it back over here again? Yeah, you know, and that's the da the danger of work sharing. So you know, sh sharing is always sort of a mixed bag. It, it brings wonderful opportunities, but it also opens up the door to uh, things you don't want to have happen. So you said it's in the product uh, development plan. It's definitely the, the folks who are working on this whole issue of uh, how the data structure works and how we store data into it. Yeah, it's, it's definitely on the roadmap of one of the problems to solve. It's new, right? Because last time I offered this course, Revit didn't have this. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah no, it's, this is one where, especially as, as we're using the models in bigger and bigger ways and more people are trying to share the models, it became very important to solve this problem. Sure. When it was three people in the room, no one cared as much. No. So who's interested in using a central file? That team it's, it's definitely a good thing if you have several people with the same role who all need to work on the same aspect of the building. But if you divided your work, then link files is a fine way to. It's really kind of a hybrid both. Yeah. 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 Yes. And they're working uh, together as architects. Yeah. Yes. And I'm the structure. Yes. yes. It's better if we link the file and not share. I would probably then, yeah, let the architect share yeah, and let you link. Yeah, that's how it works. So there should be no problem to link another Revit file with our central model file. No worries. It's, it links in just the same way that we were linking two weeks ago and stuff like that. Remember, always get the coordinates of the grids in sync, but as long as those stay in sync, everything will be fine. 
There's really no difference whether it's a shared or a solo file. Okay. So yeah, your model, I think, is actually a pretty good hybrid approach between the two different things. And so let's see how it works for you. I think that's a good one. Yes? Um, how would you make sure that um, your team member is not working on the central farm itself instead of like a local farm? That's actually something it's hard to control because no, if they do that thing where instead of saying create a local, yeah. they just open it, they could be making changes to the, uh, the central. That's it's kind of okay. They can be making changes to it. There's really what would I say? There's not much of an impact. They're sort of working directly on the master copy of it. It's it probably won't hurt you, but it's not a very good practice to do that. So it's but you know people do that. You know, they'll get in there, they'll start making changes directly to the central and saving changes to the central and. There's not a huge negative impact to it. It's just that you can only have one person doing it at a time. It's just it's safer if everyone's like one step removed from the central. Well, if someone's working in the central while on the same token, you're trying to synchronize from the local copy to the central. That should work okay because even in the central, they'll only have borrowed specific elements. Mm -hmm. So it's really, yeah. You know, the key is to really make it be just an element by element basis. Because really, if you synchronize every 10 minutes or however often you synchronize, you probably have only changed like 10 or 15 elements in that period of time. Yeah. What you don't want to do is, this is where we usually get ourselves in trouble with, people would check out a bunch of stuff in their own little work set and make some massive change that affects 100 different elements and all the different linked elements to it. And somehow when you try to sync it back, it just won't sync because there's just sort of too big a change in that. Well, there's, there's funny little things. Think about where this sort of, where the, the hole is in this, or where the danger is in this. You, you sort of saw earlier how if you like have walls that are attached to roofs, or we can link things together uh, parametrically in Reddit, and that's a very, very nice thing to do. But if you make a change to a wall that was linked to a roof, and then someone else makes a change, well, that, it's more like the other way. Someone else makes a change to the roof, and then you make a change to the wall, yeah, you've actually, you need to change both things because things are linked to the elements that you're changing. And it's, you are getting sort of confusion about that stuff if you kind of worked independently for too long. Because, you know, a lot of elements, it's not just the individual element, we also have to worry about how they join the other elements. Uh, what if I scored my model like this and then I want to go to a particular time? Ah, you want to go back. Okay, now, did you synchronize it yet? Yes. Yeah. No, I mean, without fixing it. If we synchronize it, and then we want to go back. Sure. Why don't you go ahead and let's well, let's take a look back before before I have you do that. Oh, oh she no, already synchronized. No, no, I didn't. Oh, no worries. Let's no. It's it's a very valid question. Let's take a look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and go open, and I'm going to go open our, our shared central file, create a new local. When I do this the second time, I have the choice of whether I want to kind of just overwrite the last local from the last time I used, or whether I want to have a timestamp version. The timestamp version is kind of a nice way. That way I can keep track of what I did last, you know, at 3 o'clock versus 4 o'clock versus 5 o'clock. You sort of keep more of a history that way. But you can kind of choose either way. And let's take a look. Ah, my file looks curiously like your file right now because uh, you synchronized it and there's sort of everything sort of messed up. If you want to go back, what you can do is, see this part that says restore backup? We can go ahead and choose that. Actually, let me show the history. Let's see what's in there. Now it'll be sort of against a specific file. Let me try this. Restore backup. I'm trying to think about it. I haven't used this feature in a long time in terms of doing it. There's definitely a way to roll back. So there's two strategies. We can either try rolling back, although I'm sort of curious about what I'm supposed to be seeing here. Let me have to check what sort of like what I am supposed to be seeing there, because that's where it is. Rolls back changes made to a workshare project or say as a specific thing. You can roll back to a previous version of the central or a local copy. When you roll back all later versions in the back director are lost. That should all be okay. I guess one thing I can do is there's these older versions here. 
I think of it being there. Browse for folder. I want it to be in there. It should be on my local drive. Because it, what it does is it puts the local version just in uh, inside your documents folder. So, but I'm curious about what it is doing now because of these, it should be one of these backups. Like here's the latest one. Like these are the ones that were a little bit earlier today. But as I go to that, I don't see anything unless it's just that folder. Is not a valid backup record. I'm going to have to play with that to kind of sort of see exactly what's going on there. I'll get you to answer that one because I don't want to just fumble with it. But there is a way to sort of back it up. The other way to do it, though, that is actually sort of equally valid is if one of you has a local, you know, saved on your machine that really is a better copy than the last central, you know, just go ahead and open that local and save it as a central. Does that make sense? So what I can do, let me show you what that looks like. You know, if this isn't a good one, if I really want to go through and I'll do an open, and I have oh, one of these ones that was a little bit earlier today. That was 322. Here's one at 303. So I really want the 303 one instead. So I'll open it up. And after I go through and open it, what I can do is do a save as. And with a save as, as a project, I can make this a new central. So you can always go back, and that's a good reason to keep the locals around, is you can always just sort of back up and make that the new central for people to work out of. Okay. So that's kind of the start of work sharing. But why don't we go ahead and do this. Let's take a little break right now. For Let's do the five-minute stand-up and stretch sort of thing. We'll kind of reset our gears a little bit. If you want to keep on playing with this stuff, please do. Or if you want to help with setting it up for your own project file, we can help you do that. But it's really, uh, it's really one more where it's once you get the file set up and you start playing with it, it tends to work. But it's always until you get it set up on your own machine. You, never, you think you got it all, but you don't quite have every last detail. So uh, it just takes a little bit of playing around with it. But there's really not much more to it than that. As long as you get everything set up and synchronized, you should be in good shape. Okay, so let us break for now, and I'll see you in about five.